Welcome to episode four of our SNC Shy Talk series. This week we're going to go through something a little bit more topical and probably a bit more controversial. But we're going to talk a bit about uh, kind of like nutrition, weight management, and how it has an impact on injuries and how it can affect sport and sport performance. Uh, there's a couple of ways you can go with this, but we'll we'll see how we get on as you go through it. Um, so I suppose what I was thinking was, you know, we're coming into the summer, and everyone has that kind of idea of I want to lose some weight and I want to, you know, get fitter and get healthier. And their go-to is usually to do some dramatic increase in exercise, whether that be a lot of running, whether that be doing some outdoor classes, doing some transformation challenges or whatever it may be. And I just think that approach to weight loss is probably having a knock on effect on some sort of injuries. And, uh, you know, we might just want to try to discuss things that you could do differently that might, you know, prevent some of that things happen. And then we'll probably dive in or delve into some sport performance kind of things. Um, and yeah, we'll go with that. What's your thoughts now? Or what is your even at the whole weight loss thing when it comes to the summer? Um, yeah, but I suppose as you said, like, um, like you've said there, that you're, you're seeing a lot of injuries in, in the clinic now at the minute, and um, just two of the people probably trying to flog themselves with exercise. Um, but it's probably not the best way to go about losing weight or managing your weight. Um, so probably like, yeah, the, the nutrition side of things is definitely probably more, um, more, I suppose, valuable in, in weight loss, I suppose. So, um, but, uh, yeah, so what kind of, what, what, what have you seen in the clinics so far? What kind of injuries and what, what's been kind of the main thing that's been happening, do you think? Yeah. So like, you know, if you kind of take, think you're a typical person who jumps into exercise in the summer, you know, it's probably someone who's carrying a bit excess weight that they don't want. Um, usually people who aren't overly active and I think their first go-to is usually running um, which is usually ends up being road running and you know they do some sort of online fitness classes or whatever um, and you know it's, it's usually just a case of it's too much too quickly and um, low has gone through the roof and you know that's kind of having a knock-on effect. Like I've had a couple of things on. Like, you know, there's there's shin splint or shin splints issues. There's you know knees that are beginning to hurt. There's hips that are beginning to hurt. There's calves that are flaring up. Like there's there's quite a lot of things. Like you know, I'm kind of expecting some low backs to come in due to it. Um, but it's just the kind of thing of like, like running is the go-to for everyone nearly. When it comes to yeah, everyone trying to get so. fit. I suppose it's, it's probably just the most accessible to everyone, I suppose, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. It's just an easy thing to do. Yeah. Um, but it's, it, that's, it's nearly a case of their load is just dramatically increased. You know, this yeah, is like, usually yeah. Like active. Because I suppose like the, the 5K is kind of just the, the automatic thing that people do. Like yeah, first yeah. day out. Go to, you know, yeah. like someone who, who's probably slightly overweight and hasn't trained in ever gone out to run a 5k isn't a, he's probably not going to end well like, yeah so. it's not like it. it's but, just a, it's, it's, yeah. a, it's a handy one to pick isn't it like you think you're going, I'll go out for half an hour I'll go out and do a 5k or something yeah and just flog yeah. yourself for the 5k <laughs> hard to get through the roof for the whole thing and probably end up sick for the week as well after it, sure. yeah five or six days later you're still in absolute agony yeah yeah it's in the horrors <laughs> but yeah so like I think if we add in something else to someone's uh, toolkit that in, instead of having to, you know, go out and flog yourself, as I was saying, or go out and do a mad so-called hit session where you're jumping around like a spare prick, like if we can just, mm. if, if, we can, <laughs> <laughs> if we can just, uh, you know, maybe educate people on how weight loss even happens, like, you know, yeah, exactly. Physi physiologically, like what actually has to happen for weight loss to occur, and if I think if the understanding is there, 
and they know why and how, then they might be able to approach things a little bit better. Um, because you know, like realistically, exercise alone is not going to help you to lose that weight. Um, no. Oh, definitely. Sure. Like, if, yeah. Um, like I know, like your fitness watches and stuff aren't they're not accurate to track calories, but I'm just going to use it just for the sake of this. Because if you if you look like if you do a, a gym session and go on a run, and you look at the amount of calories burned, it's going to be like two or three hundred calories, or just less than less than a meal. Do you know, it's it's it, but you you don't really burn off calories through exercise. So you, you need to train, you need to do it a different way. Like you need to uh, need to do it through your your diet and through your probably lifestyle more so than just exercise. Because I mean, you know, exercise takes probably one hour a day, whereas to do the twenty four are probably where the main the main things are going to happen. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I suppose like for, for those who who don't know and don't understand. Um, what happens like it's basically just an argument of energy balance really like, like you know you if you take in too much then you expend each day that excess stuff is just you know it's accumulating to weight gain and then vice versa you know, if you take in less energy than you expel every day you're going to lose weight now, that's very 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 simplicity but but um that's just how it happens. And then if we just manipulate what we take in and what we expel, then you know that's basically how we gain, how we lose weight. Um, so they, they've probably heard of terms of like, you know, calories, maintenance, calorie deficit, calorie surplus, and all that stuff. Like, so you know, if we explain it as for you to basically live and just keep breathing every day, you burn a certain amount of calories. For you to, you know, move throughout the day. You know, walking, whatever you do during the day, you burn more calories. Um, each food has a calorie regardless of what the food is. So as you take in the food, you know, if you take in the exact same amount that you roughly burn, you're maintaining your weight. So you could literally stay that way for the rest of your life if you just kept taking in the exact same amount of calories. That would be your maintenance. Your deficit is eating less food than you expel. And... A surplus of gaining weight is the opposite. You take in more than you expel. Just to clarify some terms, that you might try it. Yes. Now, like how how are you go about manipulating them can be different, and like that's very simp simplistically put. And there's many different factors that can you know influence all that kind of stuff. Um, so it's not just as simple as taking in food or expelling energy. There is other things that can have a knock on effect, but for the most part, that's the. Uh, the gist of it. Just the, 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 the very, very, very basics of it, really. Yeah. But if it, yeah, if you get that in check, yeah. It's, it's a, it's a big part of it, like. Sure. Yeah. Um. But yeah. Like, I suppose we've are, like the knock on effect of injuries is there. So, like, if someone can understand, you know, through this energy expenditure and through the taking in the calories and the expending the calories, that how that can have a massive influence on weight alone without even doing any sort of exercise, then, you know, they will lose weight. So they don't have to jump to the extreme of having to go through, uh, through exercise and through mad amounts of running and mad amounts of jumping up and down in your sitting room. Well, is it, um, are you familiar with, is it, do you know Eric, Eric Helms? No, I've heard his name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. PhD, he's does um, a lot. Of, uh, he does a lot of bodybuilding and stuff. But he's a very good, uh, I suppose, a good visual representation of kind of the the main. I suppose the the, the important things uh, with regards to nutrition and kind of body composition. Um, so it's the it's the pyramid. Have you seen the, the Nutrition, I don't know what he calls it, nutrition yeah, pyramid. Nutrition it's basically yeah. at the base, at the base you have your um your energy balance, and then macronutrient think uh, intake is the next layer up, and then food quality, meal timing, and supplements is at the very top. So as like an order of importance, the most important is at, at the bottom. Yes, I'm now making a pyramid. Uh, <laughs> 
uh, and then at the least important at the peak is the the supplements. So I suppose we could just yeah we talk about that a bit. I suppose energy balance first. So um, obviously that is calories in versus calories out. Um, so the more if you take in more calories than you burn, you put on weight. If you take in less calories than you burn, you lose weight. That is the most important part of it. Um, you there's lots of different ways you can do that. Um, do you have all your clients tracking, or just yeah. some of them, or what way uh, do you do it? No, I I, I try to get everyone to track if. Yeah. No, some don't like it, and we can do other things there. But I think most people have the bad conception of tracking is the problem. It's the, no, it's not the tracking yeah. itself is the problem. It's the idea of they have to be restrictive, which is the problem, which is another issue that we have. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I have most of mine tracking as well, and um, there are other ways to do it. But I think it's it's good. It's probably good. It, it, it's probably an eye opener for a lot of people that they need. Like yes. even just like the amount of calories that are in a certain type of food. Um, yeah, like I like it that way just for more education more than else. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's not. It's not even about the the. It's probably not even about the actual tracking the calories part of it. It's just it's, it, it just helps people realize what's actually in different foods and. Um, it's one one example actually I'll give you is one of my clients. He had you know. Do you know the, the Cully and Sully soup? Yes. Um, but like, everyone would think like, oh, that's, that's healthy now, do you know, it's veg vegetable soup. But um, the fat content is quite high in it. So the calories end up being pretty, mad. pretty high. Not mad, like, but you know, but, but um, even things like that. And you see, is it, oh, what's the man on Instagram? He puts up like the, the comparisons. He does like a can of coke with. Oh, um, I, I know the ones. Like one of the, yeah. the smooth. Is he the, the fitness chef or something? Like that? That's my. He always has a piss take video, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. But like you know, you have whatever your your innocent smoothie as whatever, but then like a can of coke is less like. Yeah. So you know, I think that it, it uh, tracking is probably good for for that kind of thing. It just you know, it's like just because something is healthy doesn't mean it's going to fit into. Yeah, but like there's obviously other ways of manipulating your energy balance too, other than tracking. Yeah, and um, like you know, I think people would say or I'll always ask, like, you know, what's your calories that you should be on? And everyone's is different. Like I might mine's not gonna be the same as yours, and mm. you know, everyone's gonna be completely different. Um I suppose fi finding it is just gonna be a case of you know, trial and error. Yeah, um, a complete trial and error. And you know, there's only when you go into calorie deficit, there's only so far you can go until it's going to be unsustainable. So, like when you talk yeah. about the deficit, like realistically, I probably wouldn't go much lower than for a male, much uh, get close to two thousand, maybe and that's it. Um, so as that's for example, if I get someone who's there, and they kind of keep wanting to go and lose more and more fat to kind of tone up and get really, really, really lean. I'm not going to go any lower than that. Yeah. Like, there is points where we're saying, like, no, it's all about energy in versus energy out, but you can't just completely restrict. You, yeah, you can't, coming in, like, can't just stop eating. Like, you know, if you just, if you increase your energy expenditure, you're also increasing that deficit. So, you know, there's no point in getting someone to not eat food because everybody wants to eat more food. Yes. Um, the more food you can eat, the better. Um, so just by increasing your energy expenditure, like that, deficit gap is increasing that you have to decrease food. Yeah, and that'll be so, that'll be true like just like your daily activity as opposed to like training more is what you know. Yeah, like, so, like that, even just like watch watching your step count and stuff. Yeah. Um exactly. things like that. Even like you know if you're driving to work just park further away from the door. Yeah. To get more steps in and things like that. That's uh yeah. Yeah, just in but, case anyone thinks, oh, fuck it. You just said, you just said not to do exercise to lose weight. <laughs> <laughs> this is why we said it's a little bit more complex. <laughs> yeah, that's what we mean. But yeah, um, I think then when it comes to the cases that you're doing, say, I know we spoke about earlier on, but that whole thing of those people who will jump into those transformational challenges, 
that, you know, if you think of, if you peel back what a transformation challenge really is, it's just an advertisement for that company and that business. You know, if you get, yeah. if you get five people in 30 day challenges to go from being this way to look in the picture to looking really, really well in the next 30 days, that's purely advertising. And that's just get more people in the door to say, like, I can do this in 30 days. So if you really peel back a transformation challenge to what it actually is, and then how that affects you as the person who's buying into that challenge. Um, you're just somebody who's being used as an advertisement. So like, you know, a lot of the time your best interest isn't at heart. Um, and definitely your long-term interest and health isn't at heart. Um, you know, a lot of the time, and not all of them, but most of them will have you very restrictive in certain foods so as you said you know we don't want to restrict people in the food and we just create different ways of manipulating that energy balance but at the same time we're on about using my fitness pal as an educational tool as opposed to saying you can't track this or you can't have that because it has x amount of calories um i know like i think with everyone that i've worked with so far i actually have a document that i send them which talks through what to and not to do for uh, my fitness pal, and I if you have in it that you can have pizza every single fucking day if you want pizza, <laughs> you can have a Chinese every day if you want a Chinese, and you can still lose weight if you account for it every day, and you know we, we make it fit because theoretically I could eat a pizza for every single meal for the next thirty days, and uh, still lose weight. Still lose weight, yeah, you would, uh, yeah. It sounds like a very a fun challenge. You just, you just want to be able to eat more chills. <laughs> yeah, like you, if you haven't fucked all pizza, but you could yeah. technically eat pizza every single meal for every single day. Exactly, yeah. Days, days. Um, so like I think when it comes to them challenges, like I think you have to remember like, like 99.9% of people we'll work with are complete amateurs who don't understand nutrition and food. And, you know, they realistically, if they are people who are a little bit overweight, they probably have a poor relationship with food as it is anyway. So by you being somebody who's telling them that they can't have X, Y, and Z, you're just ruining that relationship further that they already don't have with that food. Um, and then they start to demonize foods and say they can't have blah, blah, blah. And then they get really upset and depressed that they can't have X, Y, and Z food. Um, they might have that food one day and all of a sudden they think they're the worst person in the world. Yeah. And then they go off the walls and they eat everything around them. And then you're back to square one. So like, I suppose it's, it's a lot of it is it probably just education about kind of lifestyle change and yeah. just yeah, yeah. Um, what was it? Yeah. So you can eat white bread and white pasta, and it won't kill you. So whatever. <laughs> <that>. Nice. <one. laughs> but like they're they're, they're the type of foods that are demonizing. You know what I mean? That's it, yeah. So yeah, it's it's yeah, like it is. Like everyone like stores weird. straight away, and like you know, people are beginning to shit all over Slimming World and Weight Watchers, but yeah, seeing people do a thirty day challenge is absolutely normal. When yeah, exactly, yeah. There's no, no there's theory, no difference. It's the exact and same thing. In some some ways, Slimming World and that uh, might be actually better yeah. because they whatever whatever they have your fucking sin fucking shit or whatever they call it. But so there's however many sins in a bar of chocolate set, but then they're just the sins they can have that, but they just can't have something else later. So that's probably better than you're saying you can't have something. Like, but, um, like realistic, no, like no, no one food is ever going to make you fat. Like. Exactly, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, just the amount of yeah. all the food put together. Like, I could eat chocolate for every single meal um all day and you could eat fruit every single meal all day yeah um and somebody might think you're eating healthier than i'm thinking and we could literally be taking in the exact amount of energy exactly yeah so like people demonizing pasta white bread chocolate cookies you know they can all fuck off <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Really, like you know, that's like if someone tells you a certain food is going to make you gain weight, like that's a load of bollocks, really. Like, it is, yeah. And you know, it's just ruining 
everyone's relationship. Like, whereas if you had to just got that person to understand what happens, why it happens, this is what you have to do for X, Y, and Z to occur. You're just adding more tools to their toolbox. Yeah. As, a, as opposed to just being that person who is, you know, they think they're staying in shape because they're doing what you said to do. And as soon as they stop doing what you said to do and they gain weight, it's like, oh, I can't do this for myself. I have to go back to this person. I have to go back and do it again. And, you know, from a coach's point of view, that's just you being a already corrupt brick, like, really. Like, <laughs> To put it nicely, it is. Yeah, it is. It is. It's, like, it's, I, I, I don't know how you can marry as a person ruin somebody's relationship with food in that way and not feel any sort of guilt for for that happening. Like, yeah. Like, I think the whole idea of being a coach is that you can coach somebody to the point where they no longer need you ever again. Like, yeah, you know, it, that's exactly. probably not. That's that's not a good business idea, but that's what you're meant to do. That's that's your job. That's what like. you're meant to do. That is what. Yeah, technically, like, you're meant to coach someone. Not. Yeah. So ideally, you know, in you know, and it's not going to be six weeks. You no, know, it could be twelve. It could be eighteen weeks down the line that they're in a lot better place and they no longer need you. And um, then you've done your job. Like, then you can say, "I've done a really good job." Good. Like, I, you know, you can go yes, away happy, yeah. happy knowing that they can do what you've taught them to do and if in that stage like you know and there's some people who will take that longer for that to happen and longer for that to to you know kick in and gain control over that and that's fine like i'm not saying that everyone has to have control in six twelve or eighteen weeks but six weeks is very short like you know people yeah, forget yeah, that, 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 that i know i know but like six weeks is probably the, the usual time that that people would work with someone or, or whatever or do it's, it's always a six-week challenge like or an eight-week challenge like that's not it's not a lot of time, like you know. No. It's not a lot of time to build good habits or build like yeah. good like knowledge knowledge around um, <laughs> around nutrition and training, like this. Yeah, and like the question I always get as soon as I start off is like, "What progress should I see in six weeks?" And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> like <laughs> realistically, like, if you're moving more, if you're, what is it? If you're understanding of what happens energy balance wise and understanding of what's in certain foods increases i'm happy out if you lost no weight in six weeks you know what? i don't really care as long exactly as yeah like progress is different for for everyone like you know yeah or um like yeah like i just like i don't know what, what to answer that in six weeks you know what i mean like you can't like, possibly answer that in six weeks you know <laughs> like yeah. every every person is every person is different like and they're like different lives different everything you know no no two people are ever going to have the same progress no. you know, my progress and your progress are going to be completely different like you know for me progress might just be like actually learning how to track food whereas yours might be like i don't know losing losing body fat and yeah you know, 100%. But both of us have made pro progress it's just different progress yeah all right so i suppose all right say for your argument's sake someone signs up for you tomorrow what way do you go with them uh, you now nutrition wise? You know, or how do you get them to track or how do you get them to? Um, usually just do a run through of how to actually use my fitness pal first and talk about why we're using it. Sh show them how to estimate their, um, their, uh, their maintenance calories, sorry, I blanked there. <laughs> um, yeah, so get them to show them how to do that. Um, and kind of move from there then. Um, so I'd start off just tracking calories. I wouldn't worry about macros or anything like that until they get, until they're consistently like tracking their calories within whatever, 100, 100 calories or whatever, above or below the, the, the target that we set. Um, and then move on to say protein intake and, and fat and carb intake and that moving on um, but then, then other people I, I, I mightn't track at all yeah. um, we'll just say just even things like we're gonna like eat eat half a, half a plate of veg at, at each meal so things like this so whereas the veg is going to fill them up, you know, so there's a lot of volume in that. So that's going to, they'll be full and they won't want to eat more. <laughs> yeah. 
and it's going to reduce the calories that way. But um, it just depends depends on the individual really. Um, but yeah, I, I, I try and place a big um, emphasis on eating lots of fruit and veg. Yeah. No matter who it is really. Um, just because it's it's filling, it's low calories and it's, it's also good for you, like, you know, lots of fibre and that. So yeah, that's usually how I would go. Um, um, yeah, and then, then uh, do you ever use like intermittent fasting or anyone, anything with anyone? No? Not really. Um, no, I know well, if, if no, it works, if it works as part of someone's life yeah. style and that, like, uh, it fits in, I would, but yeah, it's um, um, it's just another way of creating a calorie deficit, really, isn't it? Yeah, yeah what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, I think I have one or two who don't actually like eating breakfast just because it just doesn't agree with them. So, like, you know, mm. in some way, that is them intermittent fasting, they're just skipping a meal. That's all it is. Um, yeah, you're just eating breakfast later. Yeah, that's just it. A so. You're probably just reducing the amount of meals you have enjoyed today, that's it. Like. Yeah. Um, yeah, I suppose similar to you, I'll probably do the same. We go through my fitness pal first. Um, I suppose it's the thing I try to find first actually is what is the what's their go to uh, food that they think is a bad food? Like, you know, is it a case of they like having chocolate? Um, then by all means, we're, we're, we're tracking chocolate first and um, like if you know throughout your day that you're going to have let's say take me for example I'll, i know i'll have probably a chocolate bar with my cup of tea in the morning or like a break in the morning um, and i'll probably have a chocolate bar in the evening sitting now watching tv so i'll track them two things first and that way i'll know they're tracked they're accounted for and whatever else i have left the rest of the day i can just split it up to the rest of my meals so you know Come the even time, I've had all my food, and I'm like, oh, do you know what? I'd love a chocolate bar, and it's like, grand, like, you know, I can have a chocolate bar, no problem, and I've accounted for it and all of my calories. And it's a good idea, actually, isn't it? It actually it makes no problem. It's the same kind of idea if yeah. I was having, if I, I allowed to, you know, like having a couple of carrots the weekend, um, if it's a Saturday, put, put them at the start of the week, like, yeah, even at that, if, if it's a Saturday, I'd say, you know, wake up Saturday morning, you know, you're gonna have a couple of carrots this evening. That's grand. Put in. If you think you're gonna have five cans this evening, grand, go track seven cans. Um and whatever else you've left the rest of the day, you split it all the rest of your day. So even at the stage of like you know, you get to the even, you know you can have these cans and it fits everything. Um and even if it gets to the case you've had five cans and you want an extra can or two, you have that accounted for. It's there, like, yeah. Because we've overestimated, like. Yeah. Um it's kind of a way of I was trying to take the guilt out of people having that food more so than anything else. Like, I think yeah, the guilt, the well, guilt, the guilt was a big one of people saying, "Oh, I, I, I didn't want to have this bad food." I'm like, you know what? There is no bad food. Like every food has a calorie, regardless of what food it is. So, like, no, exactly. Just yeah. one food might have more calories than the other, and that's it. Like, um, and then the same, like, you know, once you get everyone to track and get, you know, the calorie goal kind of hit, um, I might look at calorie and protein together as the first two things. I don't really. I don't really care if someone's hit, hitting carbs and fats. If I'm really being honest, like I don't really, mm-hmm. they kind of fall into place once you hit protein and overall calories, really. Um, and then I'd look at their quality of the food, like yeah, um, exactly. You know, once you get someone understanding the calorie, like, you know, someone's having, you know, pasta and mince for dinner, then they're having, you know, some say fish and rice or something for lunch, and they're having whatever for breakfast. Um, say they're having cereal for breakfast, you know. That's what they usually have. Maybe like once they get calories in track, you might be like, right, what can we increase the nutritional value of here throughout your day? Maybe can we change your cereal to eggs and toast or something in the morning instead? To a bit of extra ca- or protein there. You know, will you change something else? Will you add more veg to one of the meals? Like, um, and go with it that way. So once they have calories in check and protein check ground, then we go on quality of stuff. Um, and there's any point in telling people that you have to have this kind of food because it's, it's more nutrient dense food and all this kind of stuff like because you know it still doesn't tackle your issue of them not mm. understanding their energy balance um, yeah, yeah. once you get their, their, their quality or sorry their, their quantity of calories in check first and then look at how what the quality is like um i work on it from there so that's kind of the way i've gone with it so far 
Um, now again, it's still not so simple to get people to track it. There's people who, when they go over the calories, they feel that they have to restrict them, and it's kind of getting that balance right is the issue. Yeah. Um, but look, it's all a bit of a learning curve. That's it. It's, a lot of it is just trial and error too, though. Do you know, it's like, why whatever you calculate your your calories, and you think you're gonna lose however much weight, but at the end of the week you haven't lost weight. Do you know, then you just haven't set a big enough. It, it just haven't been in a big enough deficit. Yeah. Do you know, like it, like it, you can go off the, the estimations and that, like, but they're they're not they're not exactly the most accurate. So. Well, again, just guess. Um, just it's, it's just trial and error, like really. Yeah. Do you know, if... and I suppose like give people who will step on a on a weighing scales every you know couple of days and get you know demoralized with that. But there's so many different factors that can you know, like I don't I don't get anyone to weigh. Um, I do at the start just so we can kind of get some sort of estimation of where yeah. they are. But uh, other than that, I don't I, I don't even ask anyone for weight or for weight. I don't even ask anyone for you know. Uh, pictures. I just kind of tell them to take their own pictures and do their own stuff. They can, yeah, keep, know keep, how it, you keep it to themselves. Like, like, yeah, um, you know, if you want to send out a picture, oh, well and good. I'm not going to go and ask for it. Um, but like, you know, people step on the whales or the whales, the whales. <laughs> <laughs> Disclaimer, don't go step on whales. All the animal welfare people in know because you, <laughs> um, so yeah, people step on scales like once every week. Whereas, you know, there could be so many things that happen that week that aren't given a true reflection. Like, you know, when was your exactly, last yeah. when is your last meal the night before you weighed? What did you what did you eat the night before you weighed? Like, you know, carbohydrates have a higher water retention rate than any other food. So like, you know, if you went to bed last night just after having some really high carb meal, the only reason you're gonna weigh more in the morning than you did last week is probably because you're retaining a little bit more water. That's not weight, that's just you have a little bit more water retained mm. and that's normal um so i think if you're someone who's it? not demonized by the scales if you get them to weigh every single day and follow a trend then yeah that's fine. exactly that's what i was about to say like you know like probably the biggest trouble is that everyone kind of compares themselves to their last weigh yeah Do you yeah. know so oh, i weighed in two days ago and i'm up 0.2 of a kg yeah. you know you haven't taken a shit <laughs> um, that's, that's it like but um, um, whereas if they did it from whatever six weeks ago and they noticed that they're down three or four kg you know yeah like your weight's going to look like a stock market graph like it's going to be up and down constantly exactly, as long as that trend exactly, is going yeah. in the right direction yeah, I think, yeah. it's never going to be linear like no I actually started tracking did. my weight uh, since the start of this week every day yeah. so no come next week and what did you notice did you like notice any kind of differences between each day and the uh, Oh yeah, sure. It was Monday. Monday I was seventy-seven kilo, and my calories have been the exact same every single day since. And last or this morning I was eighty kilo. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like I haven't changed my calories, and I've got I've gone up three kilos. But um, yeah. you know, if that was someone who is really emotionally attached to a scale, that three kilos would have completely set them off for the mm. day and probably the rest of the week. Exactly. Um, whereas you know. I realistically haven't put on three kilo. Um, I probably had food close to bed last night and I've probably got some sort of water retention. Um, either or, I might have had Monday evening for since the middle of the day on Sunday. I can't remember when last had Sunday. And I could have nothing in my system come Monday morning. Um, so that could have been a, a big reason. I could, be, I could have been dehydrated Monday morning. You know, I could have had realistically this weekend, so I probably drank fuck all water on Sunday. So I'd probably quite yeah. dehydrated on Monday morning so there's so many different factors there like um, this morning was Wednesday so I, I had a shit sleep last night and Tuesday night so that has a massive effect on what my weight retention is going to be like so that's probably another country, country in fact that's why I was 3 kilo heavier this morning but um, it's not because I put on 3 kilo weight you know what I mean yeah exactly yeah. so no, I'll, I'll, I'll send you a video or a picture next week and see what this, if I remember to weigh myself every day, I, that's a problem I have. I don't remember to do it. <laughs> but, um, and again, like, you know, my, my timing could have been inconsistent as well, but each way ends. You know, I'm trying to do around eight o'clock. I think it was about half nine this morning. So, you know, there's no timing exactly. factor there. Yeah, like, just, there's... So there's no point weighing yourself. 
on a Friday evening after you've eaten all day and then your next weigh in is Sunday morning after yeah. having eight hours in bed where you haven't eaten a single thing and all of a sudden it's on Sunday morning you're so much lighter and then you weigh yourself Monday evening and you've put on six kilo and six <laughs> Yeah, you had a big day Sunday, Monday. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like if you put on that weight, like there's so many different variations or variables you have to take into account there. Um, so yeah, don't go off your weighting skills. That's another one to go off. Yeah. Basically. Um. But yeah, as for I don't know, that's for you for the general population person. Now that's, um, they're all very yeah. simplistically put. Um, yes, it would be like there's so many is, more. It is more complicated than what we're saying, but people probably don't need to, to worry like if, too much about that once they get the basics in. Yeah, like if they get that, they see the results. They're so much better position than they were before. And like, yeah, and um, do you do anything like do you work on like uh, like attentive eating or anything like that with people? So yeah. eating, eating slowly and trying to notice the point that they're actually full. Uh, I haven't gone into that detail yet. Um, yeah. Like it, it may have to be something you do. Um, you no, know, there's there's people there who, like, I think most of my problem at the minute is you're getting people to continuously track or yeah. getting people to trust that the calories I've given them are the, uh, are, what are, I want them to really... actually hit. There's people who are eating so much less. Like the meant people that exactly. eat, they yeah. people that eat no food most of the days because they think they're, you know, if they hit the goal I've given them, that it's going to cause them to gain weight. Yeah. is mad. And yeah, then yeah. you know, those same people come the weekend, will eat excessively. Yeah, and it will have you know, counteracted what they've done during the week. Um, it's getting people to trust that process is is a little bit of the issue that mm. it's the biggest issue so if i get that all nailed down fine then you might look into a tent meeting um but it's just trying to nail the basics is the issue um but other than that you know most people i work so are, are get we're getting the process and um, you know some have taken to it like like so quickly and they're flying through um and then, you know, there's some who are taking a little more time just to, like fully commit nearly. Mm -hmm. um, but again, I think some people are putting, like, some people, a lot of people are put off by previous experiences they had with tracking and uh, people telling them to do X, Y, and Z. And, you know, that's why I've gone for like that food that they feel guilty with eating as being the first on the track so they can have everything they, they like to have, they can have it. Um, I suppose the one thing we didn't mention is that uh, us males have it so much easier. You know, like we have four consistent weeks in a month. Uh, yeah, true. <laughs> whereas if you're a female and you're finding out you're struggling a hell of a lot more, that is completely normal. Um, you know, I've, I've listened to a lot of people talking about how they control having their females in a deficit if it, when it comes to their menstrual cycle. And a lot of people will only have their female clients in a deficit for two weeks out of the four. Um, you know that there are two weeks where everything is good and uh, you know there's no hormonal changes there but then the two weeks in and around the middle of the menstrual cycle is when they'll go back to maintenance you know they'll go back to just having enough energy to be able to deal with the processes that that's actually happening as opposed to that person who's thinking they're in a deficit for those two weeks and because of cravings and everything that they want to eat more food and feeling bad because they've eaten more food, whereas like, you know, the body is naturally craving more food for the process that it's designed to go through. Like, um, so like, if females are struggling with it a lot more, that's normal. Whereas we have it quite easy, if I'll be honest. You know, we, don't have, we don't have to deal with that kind of uh, no. <laughs> biological pressure. So like, yeah, that, that's with, with some females, it's a lot more complicated. Um, and you know, it's probably something I wouldn't have been too aware of until I started getting some female clients and mm. we started kind of discussing it and talking about how they're feeling and then listening to people talk about how they approach the same situation. And I think for women as well, to try to understand that is a big thing. A lot, a lot of people don't understand like what would be the best way to do things there. 
Um, you know, I think someone said before, if they got someone to, if they had a female client and say, like, you know, you did 12 months a year and you had them to in a deficit for half of each month, you know, that's technically six months in a deficit, as opposed to having someone in a deficit for the first four weeks in January. And then shit hits the fan in February and they just don't really go away from tracking because they can't do it. You know, you've, you're in a deficit for four weeks as opposed to being in deficit for the longer period of time, just granted over a long period of time. Um, but it's more sustainable. It's more, you can actually like, embed into your normal life. But um, yeah, so that's one I'll probably do a little bit more work on to try and understand yes, that a little bit more. Yeah, I think that's, that's probably something that every coach needs to work on. Yeah. But, um, it's probably, probably one of the lesser known. Um, it's just to make, at the end of the day, you want theories. to make your client feel more comfortable as well. Like, you know, it's not about just... Exactly, you know, yeah. You know, and I think we talked about other factors that happen there. Like, you know, your daily stress of your life and your job is going to have a massive impact. So I think a lot of some of the people I'm working with trying to help them organize that stress is more important than me organizing their galleries like, and their training sessions. Mm. You know, there's some people who I haven't even put in training sessions for the last two or three weeks because we had to manage stress and you've had to manage what's happening in their life and just trying to say, right, Joe, instead today, let's just focus on getting 6,000 steps and drinking two liters of water mm. um, as opposed to being like, right, we have to get three gym sessions in, we have to hit this many calories, we only hit all this protein and then all of a sudden something happens in work and they have a really stressful day in work and it's like, fuck, my week's gone at the window like... Yeah, it's um, true, isn't it? Yeah, everyone kind of just catastroph catastrophizes. Yeah, and then here's me sitting being like, you didn't get these fucking sessions in, what the fuck's up like? Yeah, no. that's it. Of course, yeah. But yeah, I think the general population is a lot more complicated because um, there's, there's so many factors to consider. Yeah. Um, and like ultimately, like their like, like performance isn't going to be their goal. Yeah, exactly. They don't, they don't need to eat to perform. So, like, there's no need for them to, to be set up to do that, if you get me. Yeah, 100%. You know, so, uh, yeah. I don't know what I was trying to say there, again, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know what you mean. Like, they're, they're not the ones who have to worry about all the freedom takes so they can perform to their maximum capabilities. Like, yeah. If you, can, yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Or they don't have to worry about, like, having to go to a training session every Tuesday or Thursday. You know, um, I see, yeah, if they don't need to worry about carb loading or anything like this. Like, if they don't, yeah. if they don't hit however many carbs that they're meant to hit on a certain day, yeah, that's exactly. great. Like, you know, don't you worry know, about then, it. Then yeah, that kind of just ties us straight into the performance aspect, you know, like, then that's mm. when nutrition will change. Um, I don't know what your whole approach to that kind of sports performance is. Um, I started using quite a lot of analogies recently, and you know, in my yeah. head, I'm, in, in my head, I'm kind of like. Like, why do I got what I getting someone to work on their sport nutrition if they can't get their regular nutrition and track? Like, yeah, you no, know, it's like the analogy I'm trying to use in my head is like, I keep, I keep comparing everything to cars. Like, so, like, you know, your sport nutrition is basically like the diesel load battery you're putting into the car. Like, but if that engine has no oil, like, you're not going to go anywhere anyway. Uh, so, basically, if you can't get your, your general nutrition in decent nick anyway as in like your oil and the engine. What's the point of filling with a fuel if it's not going to function regardless? Mm. You know, Definitely. I, think, I think sports nutrition is just paving over the cracks that are already there. Um, and like, you know, ideally, you should... if you had someone who actually had decent nutrition to begin with, carb loading might not be something they have to do. Like, unless they do Exactly, yeah. If they're hitting it across carbs. the week and they have enough carbs, they don't need to, they don't need to start stuffing themselves full of... Um, and porridge and Lucas Ed Sports before a game and or bread pasta you know, and bread so, rice and brown bread, whole uh, bread. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> As opposed to white bread. Stop. Um, but I suppose if we go back, if we go back to my, my famous pyramid, um, How a pyramid scheme. Well, sports nutrition would probably be like the the top of it, the top the top two tiers probably. Yeah. Would be so your, your meal timing and your supplements. Um. So I suppose. That's probably really the only time when you have to to worry about that. Yeah, hundred um, percent. Once you build that foundation so, with everything else, like you know, back 
it's, it's going to be it's going to be to fairly solid. That. Like, I suppose it's that's where you reach your peak. <laughs> Yeah, so I suppose, yeah, we'll just we'll talk about those two, too. So I suppose we the meal thing in the supplements for someone yeah. who is a, a decent quality athlete, I suppose. Um, what, what to eat in our own your, um, training sessions or games or whatever races or anything like that. Um, yeah. So, yeah, what did, uh, did you get it? So before, before a training session, what would you... Not not a, not advice, I suppose. But what would you kind of? Yeah, obviously advice. What would say? <laughs> yeah, um, this isn't going well for me this week. <laughs> I suppose, like, I think getting, I think it's only more important to make sure that meal isn't too close to training. Yeah. Um, the last thing you want is any sort of like, you know, gas and you know distress. Um, the last thing you want to do go on the pitch is feeling your stomach at you. Like you don't want to yes, to, there is nothing, <laughs> nothing worse. <laughs> you do not want to have to run back into the jacks. Yeah, um, it's not especially nice. If, if, especially if your club is white shorts, <laughs> definitely not good then. Or if you're during cold and the dressings are closed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like you know, I think having, yeah, not having any gastrointestinal distress is probably the main thing. So. Like, there's no point in having someone who you're just saying like you know the best thing to have is some form of slow release carb or whatever throughout the day like i think to begin with if you just eat food that you know agrees with you um, and yeah. that you know won't cause any distress and then like with any general population we'll gradually look at increasing the quality of that like um but yeah then like i suppose for after games i'm not really a big of the big show you have to have this after games you know just again people want to have might have some form of gastrointestinal distress after games so again it's whatever suits um that whole mix of you have to have protein in 15 to half an hour minutes after having yeah, exercise not, you know isn't really it's, it's not true like it is true but um yeah i suppose like when it comes to most exercise like your carbohydrate intake is is king like you know it's the one that's going to fuel most things, whether that's, you know, some football match or um, a high endurance event, like, you know, carbohydrates are going to have like a lot of, a lot of an input there when it comes to energy and helping you do what you got to do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I suppose like there's a lot of, there's, there's a lot of like products out there now as well that um, can claim to be, I suppose, uh, Kind of the ideal whatever a carb loading drink or food or anything, like, you know. Yeah. I suppose like someone having a Luke's Head Sport before a game, like if you go back just to like stomach discomfort and like like do five hundred minutes of Luke's Head Sport slashing around your stomach going into the game, like you're not going to feel great. Yeah, um, or, or, or twenty jellies, especially especially like because I suppose with a lot of players, like you know, they don't want to eat much today of a game. Yeah. Anyway, because and then. They're probably going in having something like that on top of an empty stomach. It's probably not, not the best way to go. Yeah, exactly. Or even the players trying different things before a game or before a race or anything like that. It's also probably yeah. not. I suppose the best way, if you, if you want to try something, try it before training. Yeah, you know, like, exactly. If you need to get sick or you need to go to the jacks and train, that's not a big deal. Like, you know what I mean, um, right, it might be a little bit embarrassing, but like, fuck it. Like, you're trying, if you're, you're trying out something, like. Like whether that's, you know, taking some sort of drink or whether it's trying out caffeine, uh, you know, try it in training. Don't go and try it in game. Um, you know, the, the games where you want to be like on, like on point, performance wise, and not have to worry about shit. Is the Luke's that I'm after drinking going to make me absolutely want to throw up inside the pitch? Or, you know, is my heart absolutely beating too much chest because I'm not taking a caffeine tablet? Like, um, which is not fun. No. <laughs> um, so yeah, like try that shit in, in training, like. Um, I suppose supplements. What kind of supplements do you use, or do you even? I uh, I don't really advise anyone. Like they're not like. I suppose they're, if, if we go back to the pyramid again, um, they're at the they're at the very tip of the pyramid, and they're like the, they're the smallest part, so they're probably the least, yeah, the least important. But I suppose if if someone was something like maybe like just multivitamin 
and um, maybe vitamin D. Yeah. Um, obviously, we live we live in Ireland, like, and don't get a lot of sunlight, so um, yeah. they would probably be maybe the ones I would. Yeah, I would um, advise taking, but uh, then uh, creatine probably another good one, and then whey whey protein. Even then, like if you can get your protein in through through just your food, your food intake alone, they're probably better off. Like, yeah. um, of course, like protein check, they're, they're just handy, like they're handy to have around. Yeah, I've seen a couple of arguments actually for saying that, like, you know, whey protein shouldn't even be viewed as a supplement and should actually be viewed as a, as a general food source. Like, as if, yeah, it's true, like, actually, I suppose. You know, I, I, I kind of understand that, like, no, yeah, because really, it's not just another protein source, like, it's not, yeah. yeah, like, not everyone's getting their protein anyway, like, and it's like, it's not so easy to tell someone, like, you know, go have an extra. Yeah, eat, eat a chicken fillet, like, yeah. yeah having that, because, you know, that could cause them um, gastrointestinal stress of having extra food for the sake of having it. Like, yeah, um, exactly, yeah. Um, or having some extra eggs, whatever, like, what? Yeah, I suppose, like, yeah, probably creating a way probably for my first two go-tos, really. Yeah. Um, like, I think people are kind of fearful of creating. Like, there, there's, there's, yeah, fuck it's, there's, it's, there's, there's no downsides to it, really, like. Not really, no. Maybe no. maybe some like stomach discomfort or something. Yeah, like I that's find, probably the only. Especially with loading, the only loading thing. will loading will cause a lot of stomach or yeah stomach discomfort. Like it's it's rotten. Like, um, like it's, it is that's not nice. But um, you know, if you, if you take it, like, just if you take it in small doses every single day. Like I think it's even for like cognitive function. It's yeah, like it is like probably the most is the most researched supplement. Yeah, there is. Yeah, and there's there is protein. very little, very, 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 very little to say it is it's not beneficial. Yeah. But um yeah, that's where we all have to add. Yeah. But I suppose and, and the whey protein thing is it's not magic like. Do you know? Yeah. yeah. Is that that's it's kinda it's kinda marketed as 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 it is going to it's gonna make it turn into fucking Arnold Schwarzenegger or something like it's not yeah. um, it is literally just it is just a different source of protein like it's no different than a chicken breast exactly. or eggs or anything like you know like you don't eat a chicken breast you, do, you don't, don't have to back. take a protein shake straight after a after a training session yeah and that so just I suppose for people to realise that it's not it isn't the magic um, magic dust <laughs> that is made out to be yeah exactly but like yeah I yeah. suppose there's, there's a couple of take homes there like and hopefully some people get something from it um, whether you're a general population person trying to be active and lose I suppose the, the biggest the biggest thing to take away like is there's no there's no quick fix there's no certain food that's going to go to make you lose or or gain weight yeah like, there is um, no there's no good and bad food there's just yeah, food and some, food. some some foods contain more calories and more nutrients some foods contain less calories um yeah. but at the end of the day they all contain a calorie regardless of what the food is and what it's made up of every single food has a calorie and you can eat whatever you want and still lose or put on weight it makes fuck all difference um so go eat your your pasta and your cookies. Exactly, yeah. Drink your cans. And enjoy them. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Which, uh, have uh, a couple of cans for us. Exactly. Um, yeah, I don't even think it's to add there really. Um, yeah, don't do six week challenges either. <laughs> no. No, definitely no. don't. Um yeah, and don't stick with a coach just for the sp- fact of sticking with him. Like, if they're not giving you the tools to add to your toolbox, like, you know, there's there's no point. You know, you've you've, you've exactly bought... there. There, your coach will be there to serve you, not you serve yeah. them. So, like, you 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 basically bought a toolbox, and you want that coach to be able to help you like put tools into it. Like, you don't want to come back out with an empty toolbox, and you know, six months down the line, like, you still have fuck all the show for it. Um, or you've gone backwards and you have to go back to that person because you weren't given the tools to do what you have to do. Um, as far as like, if your coach isn't coaching you to to not need him or her after your time with them, then 
you should probably look for another coach and text Niall or myself. Yes, <laughs> please. <laughs> that's a guilt-free plug there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's probably all we got for you guys this week. Um, so, yeah. Thanks everyone again for tuning in and all the support yeah. is greatly, greatly appreciated. So. Yeah, so please like and share and tell your friends and family and please tune in next week for whatever else we rant and rave about. Exactly, yeah. So we'll uh, so. we chat you then. Come to the side that the things that I tried were in my life just to get high on. When I sit alone, come get a little known, but I need more than myself this time. Step from the road to the sea to the sky, and I do believe that we rely on. When I lay it on, come get to play it on. I really